Uber doesn't own any taxis. Airbnb doesn't own any real estate. Swiggy doesn't own any restaurants or even make food. Yet all three of these companies are giants. They dominate their respective sectors, even though they're not actually making the product their business relies on. Without cabs, Uber would be nothing. Without accommodation, Airbnb would go bankrupt. Without restaurants or food, Swiggy would be useless. So how does this work? How is it possible? Well, these companies are using something called the marketplace model, where they simply act as a place where people can shop transact. A market. You've got sellers and you've got buyers. And the place where they go to convene, where they go to discover each other, that's Uber. That's Airbnb. That's Swiggy. Riders discover drivers. Guests discover hosts. Users discover restaurants. And in today's video, I'm going to be explaining how these platforms actually work and why they're so successful. <music> Okay, so the online marketplaces where buyers and sellers connect is usually a centralized platform, oftentimes a website or an app built by a giant company, like for example, Amazon. And yes, Amazon does have private label brands. They sell their own products under a variety of names like Amazon Basics or Solimo. There are actually dozens of subsidiary companies that Amazon owns and sells on their marketplaces around the world, but this is really just a side hustle for Amazon. The real money isn't in their inventory. It's in logistics, fulfillment, it's in being the middleman between sellers and buyers, helping them to connect, facilitating the virtual transaction of goods, and then the physical transfer of goods. So this is oftentimes referred to as a zero inventory model, where the marketplace itself isn't primarily focused on producing or buying products that they then need to turn around and sell to free up space in their warehouses. But this is actually just one of two popular models. And the other one, of course, being the inventory model. And Nika is a pretty good example of this because they actually store the products themselves physically as inventory, which means that they're able to guarantee a higher standard of quality and fulfillment for their customers because they're in complete control of that inventory. Now, in India, the marketplace model has actually really thrived, which is why there's tons of marketplaces everywhere that you look. I've mentioned two, Nika and Amazon.in, but some of the other ones are Flipkart, Swiggy, which I did mention earlier, Zomato, Cars24, and Ola. These are all marketplaces, but one thing that I haven't talked about yet are the two categories of marketplaces, horizontal marketplaces and vertical marketplaces. So horizontal marketplaces offer products across different categories on a single platform with a similar level of service. So for example, customers can buy products on Flipkart ranging from groceries to mobile phones to fashion to electronics. Flipkart basically has everything. They're very horizontal. Vertical marketplaces, on the other hand, focus on just one product category, but they offer a lot of variety within that category. And Cars24 is a great example of this because they buy and sell used cars and also provide other services like, for example, car financing. Of course, one thing that I have failed to mention here is that all of these businesses are established. Flipkart, Swiggy, and Zomato, Cars24, Ola, Nika, Amazon, they have strong seller and buyer ecosystems that enable them to make money. And this isn't the case for every marketplace, especially marketplaces that are up and coming. Oftentimes, you'll hear startups that are trying to adopt a marketplace model refer to the chicken and egg problem. That is to say, how do you get buyers without sellers? And how do you get sellers without buyers? It's a chicken and egg problem. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, there's actually a tactic here that marketplaces can use to attract both buyers and sellers, and that's incentives. So incentives, and especially monetary incentives, are one of the most popular ways of building an initial buyer-seller ecosystem. So for example, in the early days, Swiggy used to give a coupon called Swiggy 50, where new customers would get 50% off on their first five orders. Now, this tactic does work well for buyers, yes, but what about sellers? Well, one of the most crucial things a marketplace can do is make it as simple as possible for sellers to start selling. Ultimately, the reason a seller is approaching a marketplace instead of taking a D to C approach is that they don't want to spend the time, money, and resources to set up their own platform. They want the simplicity and convenience of a marketplace to do that for them. But if they find themselves confused and stressed out, they might just decide to sell on a more streamlined marketplace like, for example, Amazon or Flipkart instead. So those are the basics of the marketplace model. But now let's actually take a look at how these businesses make money. 
So the first method of generating revenue from a marketplace is called the commission model. And this is arguably the most widespread way for a marketplace to make money. They take a commission for every successful transaction. And the reason they're able to justify this is that they handle the payment and logistics for each sale. And buyers and sellers are okay with losing this money to commissions because they're using these platforms for free. They don't have to pay a subscription to have access to them. They just use them without any upfront payment. And examples of companies that use this model include Flipkart, Amazon, and Mintra. Now, another revenue generator is called the subscription model, where either buyers or sellers or both are charged a recurring fee to access the marketplace, making it more exclusive. And they're willing to pay the subscription because through it, they gain access to a higher quality experience. And also, sometimes it actually allows them to save money if they're a power user. The cost of the subscription ends up paying for itself. And Netflix uses this model where its users are charged a recurring fee to gain access to its entire library of movies and web series. Of course, this model doesn't always work, especially for new marketplaces, because they haven't built the trust required to justify a recurring payment. Unless they prove to customers that the subscription is valuable, valuable, customers won't be interested and will instead choose to shop on marketplaces that are free to access. And for sellers, if you're asking them for a subscription, they need to be absolutely certain that that recurring payment is going to give them more exposure to potential customers than listing their products for free on a marketplace that doesn't charge them anything. One example of a successful marketplace using a subscription model for sellers is India Mart. While India Mart is totally free for buyers, its main source of revenue is subscription fees received from sellers. Now, in the case of platforms like India Mart, you pay a one-time subscription fee and list as many products as you want. But this isn't exactly viable for every type of product. And that's where we need to discuss another model called the listing model. With this model, sellers are actually charged for every single product that they upload on the platform, every SKU. And this model is utilized when sellers list high ticket items like cars or houses. Sellers usually end up profiting here from having more than one product listed on the platform. And the marketplace actually benefits from this as well because the more products the seller lists, the more revenue the marketplace brings in. Also, this model is usually implemented when the transaction typically doesn't occur on the platform itself. The marketplace is just a discovery service and the actual purchase happens offline. So in this case, the marketplace can't charge a commission, but they can charge a listing fee. And it's also worth noting here that some marketplaces will take a hybrid approach where a listing fee is charged for sellers who want to get their product in front of more eyeballs. So they're willing to pay that premium listing fee. But if they prefer, they can also do it for free. They can opt for that option and customers can just discover their listings more organically. And of course, one of the challenges of this model is pricing listing fees appropriately. If the fee is too high, then sellers might be scared off. And if the fee is too low, then the value of paying that premium listing fee for visibility diminishes as competition in the marketplace's premium segment increases. And you also don't want to make the free listing functionality too powerful, or else sellers might not feel that the premium listing fee is justified, and they might just choose to list for free instead and achieve similar results. And finally, now we have the freemium model. Here, the marketplace can be used free of charge for both buyers and sellers. And the idea is that once buyers and sellers get hooked to the platform, once they realize how valuable it is for them, then they don't mind paying a fee or a subscription to gain access to additional power user features. But this is also a tricky balancing act for the marketplace because you don't want to make buyers and sellers feel like the platform is useless without the premium functionality. Otherwise, they might just get frustrated and leave. But you also want to make the premium functionality power enough to pay for. SaaS companies like, for example, Slack are a great example of successfully navigating this terrain. So Slack allows you to gain access to basic features for free. So you onboard your whole team, everybody gets comfortable using Slack. And then as your company grows and the need for premium features becomes more and more apparent, then you switch over to the premium model. Now, obviously, I myself have never built a marketplace. I'm just telling you guys what I know from my research and also the conversations that I've had with founders. And that's actually the best way that you can learn more about the ins and outs of business. And specifically in this case, the nuances and realities of running a marketplace business. The founders of marketplaces like Swiggy, Taxi for Sure, and Spinny have so much knowledge and insight to share with people who are willing to take the time to listen to their advice. And so now I want to tell you about Axel India's upcoming event, Decoding Marketplaces. So Axel India, for those of you who don't know, is one of the leading venture capital firms in India, and they usually work with early and growth stage startups. And they're also the first investor in a little known startup back in 2009 called Flipkart. And the $1 million check that they wrote as seed money for this fledgling 
fledgling company enabled Flipkart to set up their initial operations and also gave confidence to other investors to join the party. Now, Flipkart is just one of many examples of Excel's successful, lucrative portfolio investments. They've also played a vital role in shaping the sector and also molding the future of many marketplace startups like, for example, Swiggy, Captain Fresh, Taxi for Sure, Zetwork, and Blackbuck. And the amazing thing is that they've actually compiled all of these success stories on a platform called Seed to Scale as long-form interviews, where they discuss everything from achieving product market fit to dealing with large competitors. And the first link in the description of this video is Excel's YouTube channel where you can find all of these full-length interviews. So Decoding Marketplaces, this event that's happening on December 1st, is part of the Seed to Scale initiative. And for this event, Axel is going to be bringing together aspiring startup founders and also successful business leaders to learn more about India's marketplace ecosystem and also how to navigate it. Now, I want to take this opportunity to say a big thanks to Axel for collaborating with us on this video. And if you want a chance to participate in this exciting event, or you just want to learn about the stories of the founders that have participated in their program, Seed to Scale, then click on the link in the description down below. And by the way, this is an exclusive invite only event. So it's a pretty rare opportunity for Backstage with Millionaires viewers to learn from India's top marketplace founders. So head over to the link in the description down below for a chance to win a ticket to this event. And thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.